What's up everybody, Captain Gino here. Today we're gonna to talk about how to set up your Lowrance HDS Live Leica Pro. Oh. This has never been turned on, this particular unit here. I literally just hardwired it to power. We're gonna turn it on together for the first time and I'm gonna share with you how easy it is to set up this, how intuitive Lowrance is compared to some of the other people out on the market, some of the other brands out on the market. Super, super duper simple to use. Precautions you need to worry about, we'll talk about in the end some of these precautions or differences that you may have and I'll go over those when we get to that. But we're gonna get right to it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this cover off. Like I said, the only thing I've done is, is rig this to power. So there's no transducer. It's not set up on a network or anything like that. Literally took it out of the box and ran it to power with a fuse and that's it. So we'll go ahead and fire the unit up. Now, uh, precautions, like I spoke about earlier. If you are on a network, say you run some Gen 3 HDS units, maybe you're running a carbon, maybe you have the new Lowrance, um, HDS Pro, when you set this up on the network, depending on the updates and what version this particular unit is running on, it could cause issues throughout your network. It could affect your global settings, your network settings. Uh, all of a sudden you can lose your thermostat. I, like, I won't tell you the, the water temperature or the, the, the depth. You're gonna lose things in some situations. So I generally recommend powering everything down first and then firing it up, get everything set up turning it off, and then any waypoints you have, settings you have, save, I'm sorry, waypoint settings, save it, remove it, do a hard reset, and then fire up and hard reset everything on your, your particular network, right? But if you're just talking about standalone, just one individual unit, it's not paired with anything else. When you turn it on, the first thing it's gonna do is gonna come to this particular window here. We're gonna hit accept. And everything's touch screen if you're moving from Humminbird or some, some other unit. Uh, just about everything here you can touch, touch on the screen. So um, it's going to ask, can configure the device? We're going to go to close. We're not going to do that right now. Auto data source selection will be performed to connect, power up all network devices. So this is when, if it was on a network, you'd have to power up every individual device. That's where you're going to find you, your network guys are going to run into some issues with your settings once this happens, which is why. It is really good to save all those settings prior to adding something to your unit, your network. Get started, not now. So we can connect the Lowrance to the mobile app, right? You can uh, register, you can activate it. The mobile app is really nice. If you ever want to screen record or do anything like that, you're gonna need the mobile app. It's good to just download it, uh, set up an account on there. Um, and then this is how you register your device, the, the device through here. So we're gonna to go to not now, right? And then boom, it's here. So it's gonna try and figure out where we're at. And that's just mapping wise. All right, so let me get on a, a known body of water here. Get over the Harris chain of lakes. And already you're seeing some detail come in on the mapping here. As far as settings go, we're gonna go to access our settings. We need to hit the top left of your control panel here on the live. And that's gonna bring you to your waypoints, your alarms, vessels, info, storage, phone, uh, your chart, your sonar, side scan, down scan. And there's gonna be some, some saved uh, screens, right? Quick, so basically quick access, take you right here to this particular screen. I never like anything they have saved. The first thing I do when I get my, uh, get my new unit, no G GPS fix, obviously we're inside my house. The first thing I like to do is go in here and set up a page that works for me. If this is a standalone unit, you know, you're gonna need something like your chart, you're gonna need your sonar, you're gonna need your side scan, you're gonna need your down scan. Cool thing about Lowrance, unlike some other manufacturers out there. It is very versatile in how you set this up. I want more pixels for my side scan, so I'm gonna just drag that down. Super simple. See how it's <clears throat> kinda off here, right? I have my down scan the largest, but I want my side scan to be the largest. I just grab it like this, slide it down. And now I'm happy with this, right? This is what I wanna save. So now this is one of my shortcuts to take me to a screen I like to use. Now we go here, guys. The next thing I do, once I've done that, is I wanna add uh, all my little overlays. If you notice, there's no water temp, there's no depth, there's nothing there, right? Nobody ever tells you how to get to that. Super simple. We're gonna go to power. It's gonna be the same for the HGS, the HGS Gen 2 touches, the Gen 3s, the carbons. This process is gonna be very, very similar and the screen's gonna look almost identical, okay? So we're gonna go to edit overlay or you have data overlay, you have just splits, right? So we're gonna go to uh, data overlay. We're gonna edit that. So now it looks like nothing happened. It brought us right back to that same screen that we set up, the same shortcut. We're gonna go into this and hit menu. So all we did was select uh, edit overlay. We're gonna add our first option, GPS. So we're gonna do course over ground. Nope, we're gonna do speed over ground. That's what we want for our speed. And navigation, let's see what they have to offer here. Nothing I want there. 
I want to have, oh, because we don't have a sonar, it's not even giving us the correct option, right? So we want to have, this is water distance, structure, depth. Once this device is configured, you'll have the, just simply the depth that you'll be able to select. And then we want to go to our time. I always like to have the time on there. And then we're going to go local date and time. Now, as you can see, all of those options are up here, but they're very small and super hard to see. Um, most of you would be very annoyed trying to see all this, but we're gonna just click on that one of those options, any option, right? And we're just gonna hit the plus button. That just became larger. We click on that one, plus button, that one's larger. That one, plus button, that one's larger. Maybe we wanna have that window over here because it's bothering us. Maybe we wanna have it here, maybe we wanna have it here. Just drag it wherever you want. Super simple, man. Lorance is amazing, super intuitive. Like, I want that here, just grab it. Okay, we're gonna put it here. We'll put it here, all right? Super simple, we hit save, right? So that is access through the power button. Power button, then you're gonna go to edit overlay. And then once you go to edit overlay, um, let's see, we'll save that, clear. So here, boom, edit overlay. And then you have to select the menu and hit add. That's how you're gonna get to that screen to add those particular items. You can delete, change, do whatever you need to do from there. The very next step I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna hit the power button. I'm gonna to go to adjust splits. It's gonna take me into a screen that looks just like this. This particular screen will let me move whatever I want, kind of wherever. So, okay, maybe I want to have my map be the largest. Don't care as much about my 2D or my down scan. And I want to get like lots of pixels for my side scan. So we're going to save it. Look at something like that. Boom. So now I have my down scan and side scan side by side. I have my map right here. And then I have all of this for my, my side scan. Next thing, this panel, super annoying, drives me absolutely insane. You have to hit it to remove it, right? Not necessarily. From anywhere, we're gonna hit pages. We're gonna hit settings. Doesn't matter what screen you're in, okay? It's gonna bring you to system. It's gonna be your first option. If you're anywhere else, just select system. Go to advanced, go to user interface, auto high menu, we're gonna turn that on. That's done. So 10 seconds, that goes bye-bye. It gets out of your way. You get the maximum amount of pixels for your graph. Still not done. Let's talk about our mapping, right? So we're gonna get zoomed in on this here. Let's see. Let's see where they got us at in the country or if we're in the country or not. Let's do this. I'm gonna take you right to mapping here and make this easier, give you a big view. There's no GPS fix just yet, right? Uh, because we're in demo mode just so you can see how everything works. But let's. Let's talk about uh, settings that are important to me on mapping. When you go to mapping, I really like to have a heading extension on my boat and I like to have range rings. You can be in this map searching all these settings all you want, you're never gonna get there. You'll never find out how to have your range rings set up on your waypoints or your heading extension. You're gonna hit pages from any menu again, back to that same screen again, right? We're gonna go back to settings and it's gonna bring us back to the screen. Now we're starting to get a little bit familiar. So think navigation, chart, here we go. Range rings, on. Heading extension, on. So what's gonna happen is your heading extension, the default is one mile, I just leave it there. It's gonna stick out a mile from your boat. It's gonna be in blue. Your range rings, they're gonna be around your boat and they will are set on your plus and minus and that will change based on how much you zoom into it. And it'll be a, a symbol saying 50 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet, right? So that's each ring is gonna be that equivalent. Those are two must haves for me to be able to, you know, revisit a waypoint, uh, you know, revisit a piece of structure we just graphed over, uh, understand which way my boat's facing and which way I'm heading down the lake. Those are things that are very important to me. Now, as far as uh, mapping options go, Depending on the Lowrance unit you get will determine what you got inside of it for map. Uh, they've partnered with CMAP. CMAP's fantastic, um, but it depends on the CMAP that you have on what you can change. It is important if you go and you hit Navionics to know that you're going to lose a lot. There's not going to be really anything there unless you have a Navionics card. If you've gone there by mistake, you're simply going to hit your menu button in the top right. Right, so if this was gone, you hit menu. Once you selected map, let me show you from another screen real quick. Say you have this up here and you hit menu and you're like, wait a second, that doesn't work. Touch the map, 
right? And we're going to hit menu again. Now it's back to that option. So if there's multiple items on the screen, all you have to do is touch your map. Once you do that, you go to more options, chart source, see map on board. That brings me back to the correct mapping. And in fact, now the demo is showing these range rings and my heading extension. Now, as far as overlay goes, you can, you can set up structure scan overlay. Everything you graph is gonna literally show kind of overlay somewhat transparent over top of your map. You actually have the option to save that as well. Say we wanna get rid of that, we turn overlay off. Say we have a heat map. Say we've downloaded a heat map for CMAP or the CMAP we come with has that. You can select heat map and it's gonna overlay there as well uh, as you scan over that. Say you want to go to, you've seen a buddy's, uh, a buddy's graph and you know every 10 foot increment, there's different shading. You wanna change the shading on your, on your mapping. You're gonna to go to more options then you're gonna to go to chart options, and then you're gonna to go to, let's see here, shader relief. That palette, let's see here. That shading, you can go to paper chart. You can customize it. If you wanna customize it, you're gonna click on shading. Then you're gonna have three options, or two options, right? So option one, option two. Right, remove those, let's go to custom, and let's build some of your own colors. So zero to five, or zero feet, we can make that, let's see here, the red zone, we'll save that. Okay, so five feet to 10 feet, let's make that dark blue. And then 10 feet to 20 feet, we'll make that light blue. We'll go 20 foot to 40 foot, we're gonna do that white. And then we're gonna do 75 foot. We're gonna make a ridiculous color like green because there's no, we're gonna say there's no fish there. Just kind of eliminate some water. And we'll do uh, like this nasty yellow for, for 150 foot. Now, now once we've done that, everything's there. Boom, we choose this. We're depth palette one. Boom, here we go. So we go back to our map options. We go to our chart options. We go to shading and we choose depth palette one. Now that's our custom palette that we've just selected. And here we go. It is up there and that gives you an idea. If you're running down the lake and you see red, probably not good, you're probably gonna run aground. And then maybe from 40 foot or 25 foot to five foot are all possibilities for, for bass to be holding. Those are gonna be your blue colors. And then you zoom out and you've just eliminated a ton of water. Like all this water, no good. All that water, no good. It depends on your fishery, it depends on the lake, but it's a great way to elim eliminate 70, 80% of the water really fast. Super important for me is the shading on my mapping. Another thing that's really important to me when we're talking about mapping, pull this off, we'll hit menu once we've selected the map. I'm gonna to go to more options, orientation. If this is at the bow or the helm, I like heading up. If it's north up, you could be driving west and north is, it, the map's gonna be facing this way, right? I prefer that map to follow me where I'm at. Wherever I go, in order to do that, you need heading up. The other option would be north up, right? North up for me. I guess if that's your cup of tea, you're welcome to have it, but finding a waypoint drives me insane. At least if I know where I'm going, it's gonna help me uh, to find that using my heading extension, the map heading up, I'm able to, to really get back on top of these, these things. And if you've ever gone over a brush pile once or twice, you might just barely see it come back down and you see this giant tree that you didn't see before. That's gonna really help you to dial it in. So those, for me, that's kind of where, where I start. This is what I want before I start moving down the lake. Now, when you talk about selecting waypoints, touch anywhere and hit flag. Lowrance vary. So when you see the icon, hit, an, hit, hit touch the icon, let it open up. There's something for everybody. Say we just hit a piece of brush. Boom, we hit brush. Okay. Now this is, for my tournament, this brush is important for me. I've, I've selected it, I set up on it, I caught a five pounder, it's important. I want it to stand out from the rest. I'm gonna make it a red brush pile. We'll save it, right? Say that's waypoint 0001. Say you want to edit it. Say red's not just enough. I need, you know, first spot. So you can select the, the, the number and we're going to delete it and we're going to put first spot. And it's abbreviated. 
But if I see that, I know that's first spot for me. We hit enter, we hit save. And now when I touch that waypoint, it says first spot. You'll appreciate this when, you're, when your map gets jammed up with hundreds of waypoints. It makes it really easy to see. In a tournament, you got nerves and pressure and everything going on, or you only have a few hours and you wanna get off the water and get to it. Uh, this will help you to make your waypoints so much easier to manage. I promise you, it's like a thousand times easier. So let's go back. We're gonna do a waypoint again. I select it. My buddy just gave me numbers. Simply hit the flag, touch anywhere on your map. Hit the flag, touch the numbers, and change them. Hit enter. That waypoint will come up. So say we're driving down uh, and we see a hump here. We flag it. Go back here, it's got some grass on top of it. Select grass, boom. Maybe in your particular body of water, you have three different types of grass. So do three different colors for your three different types of grass that's available. Maybe when you map out your grass, you don't have forward-facing sonar and you like to know where the lower pieces of grass are, the taller pieces of grass. You can literally do that by selecting short grass or tall grass right there for you. Say it's a rock pile, select a rock. Say it's a bluegill or some sort of bait fish, select the bait fish. Very intuitive, very easy, super fast. You don't have to like jump from each screen, mark, do this, blah, blah, type all this stuff in, go back to this other screen, hit this thing, it's simple. You just touch it, boom, hit flag. You're there, touch the icon you want, American flag, done. You need a little bit more, change the name, Mega Brush, right? You want notes, caught 11 pounder 2020, right? Googan by, you know, Pond Pirate Bob. Whatever you wanna put there, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you feel good. Super simple. Now that we got our mapping figured out, we need to go into and start dialing in our settings for our, our 2D, our down scan and side scan. I like to do my down scan and side scan together. Uh, they're using the same section of the three in one transducer if that's what you have. Uh, together. If you have a LS2 and you have your sonar and you have a skimmer separate, uh, these still share the same uh, settings. So now we're in my settings for my down scan. Range, I like at 100 foot. It doesn't matter the depth. With the new HGS Lives, I'm going to tell you here and the pros, Lawrence has done an incredible job with these new transducers to be able to run at a high frequency like 800 and, and a shallow, at a shallow depth. Previously, you needed to be at 455 if you're gonna run 100 feet and 10 foot of water on the sides to be able to see anything real good. What do you lose when you go to the lower frequency? You lose a ton of definition. So you're talking about cutting that frequency in half, you lose a ton of detail, but it was still enough once you got to know your graph to be able to find the things you needed to find. And I worked with what they had. But now with the lives, the biggest thing is 800. So you can do 800 on your down and your, your side scan and a hundred foot. That's, you know, that's pretty much standard where I'm going to be at. Now, are there some instances where I might want to change that? Yeah, maybe I'm looking at, I want to find fish specifically. I want more data available and I'm in 10 foot of water. Maybe I want to come down to 60 foot. I've already marked out like the, the sweet spots on the shell or the changes and it's the area is only, you know, a hundred feet wide anyways. So maybe I cut down to 50 foot and that lets me see things just a little bit better. Now is 50 foot really 50 foot. Nobody really tells you that. What you need to do is you need to take your, this black area, right? So this little line here, that's the top of the bottom of your boat, wherever your transducer is, the black area is the space in between the bottom and the, the floor there. If you have 100 feet and your depth is 20 feet, then this is only gonna be 80 here on your side scan on each side. That'll be 80 feet to, to either side. So now that you understand that, next thing we wanna do is find a palette that works good for us. So all these palettes that are here, Major differences are gonna be, if we go to say palette number eight, this gives me a very hot return. If you see here, everything's super bright. If we go to 10, not bad, right? Some, some things pop, some things don't. We go to five, bleh, right? Super like cool, I would say. You know, so there's not a lot of contrast. Nothing really jumps out. Eight, a lot going on there, 10. How can we work with these to get the most out of them? Starting out, 10 is a great palette because you can stay at 10 and stay auto and, and get a pretty dang, dang good image. And that goes for both your down scan and your side scan. But maybe your eyes don't see real good. Maybe you really like palette number eight and uh, that's what you see best. But it blows everything out. How do we fix that? 
we simply go to contrast. Now auto contrast, but you have plus and minus. So your A minus five, A plus five, whatever. That is gonna be the easiest starting out. But if you want the most detail, you remove auto and you can really fine tune it, right? You look at that, now I'm really getting this to pop. I'm at 72%. I'm blowing things out a little bit. I'm overexposing is what you'll hear guys say when it gets real bright and washes everything out. So we're gonna take that down just a little bit here. Go 72, so that's looking good, right? But guys, I will tell you this, if you're just getting Lawrence, it's the first time using it, you're a new angler, the easiest way to do this, Lawrence is super awesome. Uh, you're gonna go here, go to palette 10, go to uh, contrast, select auto, and just go to right in the middle. It's gonna look fantastic here. Uh, you can do the same thing for your down, right? So uh, we're gonna go to more options. Let's see here. Oops, contrast, we're set to auto, so we're good there. Now, on the side scan, as far as other settings here, you can go to more options and you can go to flip to your left to right if your transducer is facing the opposite way when it was installed in the back or on your front, the bow of your boat, you can flip that so you're seeing the correct side on either side. Uh, you can set up range lines if you, you know, if it's, it's easier for you to see things that way. I don't necessarily like that. And then that is it. Super, super duper simple. Not a lot to choose from. You can move your side scan distance, change your distance directly on the screen by like, if you hit the, the wider button or the, that one, it goes narrower the closer one together uh, goes wider. Another important setting on your side scan would be to remove any, like you don't want to have your surface clarity turned up on your side scan or your down scan, super important. So we're going to go to advanced and we're going to turn surface clarity off. We don't want the, and what the surface clarity does is that's the, the, the CPU, the computer here, cleaning up any clutter it sees up top. When you're talking about side scan, you do not want to remove that. You're going to remove all your bait fish and stuff from the water column. You're going to lose a ton of detail. Just turn it to off. I leave it to off for my down scan as well uh, because that is literally sharing the same section of my transducer. That's it. Super simple. Down scan, we're going to do the same thing, right? Contrast, we're going to set to auto. Frequency, 800. Advanced. Surface clarity, we're going to go off. Now, you're going to see something on there called fish reveal. This is what you're looking at right here. Fish reveal is basically going to be when a, a blip shows up there that, that this machine thinks is a fish, it's going to highlight that for you, right? I do not like that. You can even change the palette in which that, that is overlaid on there. For me, I just, I don't even want that. I don't even want it there. So I'm going to just turn everything off. It just makes everything very confusing for me. And it's something that I just, I don't necessarily want. To remove fish reveal, we need to go to more options. Deselect fish reveal or select it if you want it. We take it off and then you also have range lines here for your depth. It's not something I'm a fan of, just clutters things up. I really wanna be able to see everything crystal clear, right? So we go back, our advance is our surface clarity, frequency is 800. When would we wanna be at 400? 400 if you're in super duper shallow water, yeah, uh, okay. But for the lives, I've never found an instance where I wanna be there, right? The 800 works perfect for me for the down scan. So super simple when you're in 2D. The best settings you're gonna have here are the settings that are most important to me when I initially start out. We'll go range to auto. There's some little nuanced situations where you can get in there and you can manually set your depth. Maybe you're trying to read, you know, bottom composition, something like that. But generally speaking, auto is perfect, right? Frequency, what matters with the frequency? Why 200, why 83, why 50, right? 8350 are going to be reserved for super shallow depths. They're going to give you a much bigger cone, but much less definition. Four foot of water, three foot of water, six foot of water. That's when you're going to go to those cones because you're looking at 30% at 200 hertz. You're looking at 30% of the depth. So if you're in five foot of water, uh, you're going to be like an inch. <laughs> there's like inches. There's not, not going to be a whole lot there. So you need to drop down to 83 or 50. Uh, and that's going to let you see that you're going to lose some definition, but at least you'll be able to, you know, kind of pick apart the fish. Otherwise 200 Hertz is pretty much good all the way across the board. Sensitivity, good auto. How do you know if it's good or bad? We start going up. There's a little, some bars right here across the top. We generally want those. That's going to be our kind of our key 
we want these to be as even as possible. But just to show you here, hot to cold, that's too hot. Everything's blown out. That's A16. A12, everything's gone. Too cold, right? Auto is just about perfect. Too hot. You could probably go plus or minus one. Um, but really, auto is about the sweet spot right there. That changes on your lake. If you want to really fine tune it, turn it off auto. And you can really fine tune, right? But just starting out, auto is all you need. Color line, 76%. Go to advanced. Noise rejection, surface clarity, low, low. It's okay to put it on here. That's a completely different section of the transducer from the three in one, or if you have a skimmer from your side scan, your down scan. Scroll speed. I like mine on normal. Ping speed, that's how fast that sound is going down and up between your boat and, and the bottom. So for, for your, at the helm, you're gonna want that set to max. And then at the bow, you're going to about 14, uh, where your trolling motor is. So 76% color line. Uh, ping speed set to max at the bow, at the, the helm, at the bow, have it at 14, right? That is going to be it for your 2D. Another thing that you can hardly find any information on anywhere is this whole NEMA network or Ethernet. Which one do I need? Do I need both? It really depends on your situation. The NEMA network allows you to bring outside resources into your network of graphs. For instance, you have two Lorances hooked up and you decide you want to get active target and that comes with a separate box and a separate transducer. In order to utilize that in your network, you have to have the NEMA network. The NEMA network needs power run to it. And then you can connect the outside resource, that box, that active imaging box or the HD box to your network. If you have a aftermarket GPS antenna, if you've ever gotten a graph, doesn't matter the brand, and you try to sit still and see where you're at on the lake and your position spins in circles, you can actually upgrade that to a little bit heavier duty, individualized GPS puck. And then that's across the board on, on any brand, but that would be something outside to bring in. You would need a name your network for that to connect to your network, okay? As far as like waypoint sharing from this graph to that graph, because I want to touch a waypoint and I want to go to the bow of the boat and fire and catch it, you can do that with just Ethernet. There are going to be limitations to that. Like you have on the HDS Live, the Gen 3, Gen 2s, you're going to have, or Gen 2 Touches, you're going to have two Ethernet cables. So you can go from one to the next, and then from that one to the next one, right? You can connect that. Now, if you're talking about Elite FS, Elite TI, there's one Ethernet cable. So there'll be no way to go from this unit to that unit and make it to another unit. You can't chain it. It's just cut off right there, right? Because it's only got one ethernet because you need an ethernet out and then in and then in and then out to go to the next unit. So with your HDS units, your lives, your Gen 2 touches, your carbons, your Gen 3s, you can do that. You can go multiple with just ethernet. That's just gonna share this information here, your waypoints and that type of data. Anything outside, active imaging uh, or your 3D or your you know, 0.1 antenna, you're gonna need that NEMA network. And that NEMA network's gonna need its own power run to it uh, from the battery with a fuse. And then you're gonna have to have drop downs according to however many graphs you have or, or uh, items you have on your network that needs to come together. Okay, so another big thing a lot of people aren't gonna tell you is how to make this live just like the Pro. The benefit of the new Lowrance uh, HDS Pro is that it allows for that high frequency side scan, that mega side, that mega down that everybody seemed to get. It was like the only, and I'm a Lowrance guy through and through. I've owned them all. I love the Lowrance. I'm not leaving Lowrance. I want to be Lowrance forever. I love them. But, uh, and I'm not sponsored by them. They didn't have the side scan. Like if you looked at like the Gen 3 Lowrance side scan versus Hummerbird, it would get smoked because they had that high frequency. So the new Lowrance Pro has that high frequency uh, side scan. But don't get rid of your live. Don't get rid of your Elite FS. Because of that, you just upgraded your system and then something new came out and you're super bummed out. Lowrance is hooking you up. You just get a separate box 
to power up that HD transducer, right? At this point in time, you have to have a NEMA network. Have to have it. Can't do it with Ethernet. You add that to your network and that HD transducer, and it is compatible with your Lowrance Live and your Lowrance Elite FS. What are you gonna be missing between the Pro and the HDS Live? You can't get a, a 10, right? You gotta go nine, you gotta go 12, right? There's no 10 option. And some little frills and buttons that look a little bit better, but you still get the glass screen on the Live. That's why the HDS, were, uh, the, the Gen 3s and the Carbons were much harder to see. They had plastic screens. The, the Lives and the Elite FSs have glass. Even the Elite TI, that was plastic screen. These are glass. So you're gonna get that just like you would with the, the Pro. And then you still get that high definition side scan, down scan, that, that high frequency, just by adding that box and adding that super cool thing of Lowrance to do, uh, to, keep, to keep it where you don't have to get rid of all that, those units. It's so expensive these days. And nobody, nobody talks about that, right? It used to be a few hundred bucks for a graph. Now you're thousands and tens of thousands of dollars in. The mounts cost more than the graphs used to cost. And the boxes cost more than the graphs used to cost. It just gets super expensive. Lowrance was super cool to leave that there as an option, spend a little bit of money, right? Spend a little bit of money with them. They don't want you to spend 10 more grand. Just a little bit, buy that box, buy that transducer, hook it up and you're good to go. If you have any questions, you feel like there's anything I missed or there's something you'd like to me to go over, I would love it if you could leave it down in the comment section. Your input is greatly appreciated. In order for us to grow as a community, we need to have these open conversations. And I hope that you know, coming onto this particular channel, you're more than welcome. There's no dumb question. It doesn't matter. Just ask and, and I'd be more than happy to help you out. If you like something a little bit more structured to learn from rather than just the plethora of like incoming videos coming nonstop, check out fishonology.online. I have specialized here uh, in my career as a guide at getting you know, high school kids to fish competitively, ready for college, getting college kids ready to make it to the next circuit. Guys that are trying to qualify through the opens to make it to pro, these are who I, I help. I've put together structured lessons based off of my past experience that I know is gonna help you to gain more faster. Uh, all on the sites, fishnology.online, super duper simple to use, super inexpensive, tons of good stuff in there. Live Q and A's weekly. So you got the community, we're all there talking together. And you can kind of hear their, some of their struggles and your struggles, and you can ask me questions and, and learn how to utilize that site, learn how to get better as an angler uh, easier. And there's privates and one-on-ones and, and guide trips, anything you want, it's there. If we don't got it, you don't want it. Check us out, fishnology.online. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Until next time, tight line.